difficult. Um, when we think about this um, idea of community, I, I really like this um, image. It's a, an image of two hands, um, a, one older hand and one younger hand, and, and them coming together really in that, that closeness. And that's um, been very much the beauty and experience of the movement and uh, being rooted in a community. Uh, in, in Pope Francis' exhortation, he talks about the false cult of youth, and it was something that was um, addressed in one of the previous webinars where, you know, there's this idea that that things have to be new and fresh and uh, you know completely like original and created for it to be beautiful and and valuable. But uh, what Pope Francis kind of um, sheds light on is that actually that's um, it's you know when it when it loses its root, it loses its depth as well. And and part of the beauty of community is when we are rooted in the experiences and memories of the past, but also looking towards the future with um, excitement and hope. And um, that is like very much um, the the call and need for the world at this time. Uh, and in the movement, we have that experience, especially when we think of our JY families and the young people. Uh, we like to use the word ecosystem, where where, you know, we really rely on each other. The young people rely on those who have, you know, who are older, who have walked this journey. And, and, and those who are older actually really rely on the young people to keep them young at heart, to keep them excited about faith and, and to, to continue growing. So in this way, we, we really truly experience what community is as, as movement. And um, it's something that as we grow, deeper in our understanding of what the Lord has given uh, to the movement in this gift of community and of communion, we can also offer it in a much more beautiful way to the church. Um, I think the challenge is, though, even when I was sitting at that conference, you know, we don't, it, it doesn't come nicely packaged in a program, you know, or it's not something that I can hand to anyone and say, okay, this is, you know, this is a communion or community, or this is the experience of fellowship in the movement. It has to be lived out. It has to be experienced, and it has to be very real and it takes time also so these are some of the things we'll reflect on today and how that um, has experienced our our lives and um, our relationships the two kind of focuses that we'll we'll kind of go into is uh, how friendships build community and what happens when there is no community so ricky will take it from here um so like the first thing we're going to kind of talk about is like how how do friendships build community and so um, when we think about friendship, um, friendship is really important because uh, one of the most beautiful um, Bible verses about friendship is how um, friendship, uh, there's nothing so precious as a faithful friend. And so like in uh, Pope Francis's um, encyclical, what he talks about uh, friendship is that friendship is such an important gift. It's a gift and grace from God. And the reason why he says it's a gift is that there's two beautiful things that we find in a sturdy or faithful friend. The first one is that the Lord leads us to uh, a maturity by refining us through a friend or um, like a friend helping us in difficulties or challenges. Um, and the second way in which he talks about uh, it being a gift is that we experience God's consoling tenderness in times that we are in challenge or times that we're struggling that we experience God's like loving tenderness through a friend. And um, another beautiful thing about like a friendship is that it, it calls us into a deeper awareness of who we are and it helps us to grow in our own identity by friends calling out our strengths, encouraging us, affirming us, and challenging us. And so what's really beautiful, uh, what I think about friendship and in, in forming community is that it, it is a real gift from God and that it really helps us to help us in refining us and also helps to experience God's tenderness and the consoling care. Um, the second way in which uh, Pope Francis really talks about the beauty of friendships is that it leads us to go beyond our borders. And so, like, friendship helps, like, what he really emphasizes is friendship really helps us to have, like, a new openness to life. It teaches us about caring, understanding others. Like, it helps us to love people in a new way. It helps us to understand uh, different perspectives, new boundaries, um, especially in our own uh, life. There's times where we, like you know, encounter difficulties or challenges, and sometimes we just want to isolate ourselves. Like you know, just want to be to ourselves, and we feel like, you know, like there, there's just only like a certain way to go. But what a friend really helps you to do, and why I really like this picture, is sometimes like when we go through an obstacle or a hurdle, 
we find it difficult to keep moving forward. But what a beautiful thing about a friend is they're literally like reaching out their hand to like help you go through one obstacle to help you to like really see like a new a new viewpoint, you know. And so um, you know, even when I think about like uh, something very small, like you know, uh, recently this past summer we went on a hiking trip. Um, and I was really scared to climb the mountain. Like I was really, really afraid. But one of the, the guys uh, there, he like really encouraged me to like climb it. And I, like when I climbed to like the top of the mountain, I was like, oh, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. And I, I really experienced like the beauty of like the top being at the top of the mountain. And so what's, what's really beautiful about what I think about friendship is that there's so many times where we are challenged or overcome by our own burden. Well, friends like, help us to like see things in a new perspective, help us to like go beyond our own imagination. And like they help us to really just like experience like God's love in a different way. And but um, when we really think about friendship and the importance of friendship, I think that the best example, the person to really look at is, is Christ and his friendship with us. Um, and like you know, one, a, a Bible quote to really like help us to kind of think about that would be um, John chapter fifteen, verses fifteen, where um, where Jesus says, "I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I've called you friends because I've told you everything I've heard from my Father." And so, kind of like just thinking about the Father's love and His tenderness and His care. What's so beautiful about Jesus is that he doesn't, his friendship with us is not something where he just obliges us or makes us do something, but it's a, a place where he's revealing himself, revealing his love, revealing his care, revealing his mercy. And so Jesus is like truly like the true example of what friendship is about because he doesn't, he doesn't tell us just to follow him or do a task or like an you know, obligation, but rather he's like revealing his intimacy, like he holds us, he's walking with us. He's like, he's accompanying us in our journey. Like, you know, like why I like this picture is that he's literally just like holding us. Like, you know, our difficulties and our challenges, but like there with us, like listening to us, hearing us, encouraging us. And what Pope Francis is saying in, in his encyclical is, we learn what real friendship is by letting Christ love us, by experiencing his friendship. Because by the way we experience his friendship, we are able to encounter what real love is we are able to encounter what real friendship means. And by the love that we experience from God, we're able to grow in friendship with Him because we're able to love Him more first. But also it teaches us how to become a friend to others by offering that same love that Christ offers to us in friendship with others. And so like, you know, like uh, one of the most beautiful ways in which I think Jesus shows us this is by encountering, right? And um, Pope Francis talks about how Jesus is very patient. Like, he didn't call his disciples just to follow him or to just, like, follow him or be obedient. But the first thing, the first way in which Jesus uh, became friends with his disciples was by an encounter. Um, Pope Francis talks about, like, in, in the gospel, the first way in which Jesus um, approached his disciples by, was first inviting them. He was like, hey, just come and, like, you know, just come and see. And by that coming and see, like, you know, like Jesus, like coming and, and letting the apostles like see him, like they encountered something. They, they, they just decided to remain with him. So like, especially here, why I like this is Peter, James, and John, right? they were fishing. Jesus said, come and see. And like, they were like in their uh, own, like, you know, like their own reality. You know, they were, they were just fishers and Jesus wanted to meet them and encounter them in their own reality. And so when, when the, the apostles were able to see him, the disciples were able to see him, they remained with him, and they, they were so moved by how they encountered Jesus that they were so moved to leave everything and to follow him. And so what Pope Francis is saying is, you know, to really encounter the beauty of friendship, to really let, is to let Jesus encounter you in your own reality. You know, like all of us have different challenges. There's probably different setbacks or disappointments. And Pope Francis talks about People experience all kinds of setbacks, disappointments, painful memories, hurts of the past, especially woundedness. But what he's saying is that Christ is offering you friendship. He loves you just the way you are. He just wants to encounter you in your reality. And he says, like, sometimes our inferiority complex 
makes us just overlook our flaws, our weaknesses, our burdens. But especially, like, what he says is that Jesus is offering you his friendship, his companionship, where that friendship is something so consoling, something so healing. And especially, like, as we are at, at this time of Advent, I really encourage you that Jesus is really coming as, like, you know, he comes in his manger to encounter you where you are in your littleness. He, he comes as a servant. And so in the same way, what we learn here in, in, in um, this beautiful image is that Jesus first, and, and how he teaches us to be a friend is just encountering us. He wants to encounter us in our own realities. He wants to encounter us in our brokenness. Like, you know, and in a similar way, what he teaches us about friendship is it's an encounter. You're encountering another person in their reality. You're able to see the beauty of who they are. And so um, one thing that Pope Francis really encourages, and one thing I think is the most uh, beautiful thing about friendship is that vulnerability is the greatest place of intimacy. And this is something that even in, in our classes here in Florida, we've talked about is that vulnerability is the greatest place of intimacy. And we really do see that in like this, the encounter of Jesus, right? Like Jesus is such a, like, you know, when we think about the cross, it's the greatest place of love. You know, like we feel so loved and, 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 and so secure in that love that the Father gives us, right? And when we look at the cross, we see Jesus and it's, it's the greatest sign of love. You know, when we, we hear many songs about the cross, that it's a strong foundation. But when we look at the cross, it's where Jesus was the most vulnerable. He was naked. He was a servant. And he was so weak to show us, like, the depth of his love, the depth of his mercy, the depth of his, 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 of his forgiveness. And he literally just empties himself, taking upon our sin. And, like, you know, when we look at, like, his vulnerability, where he was just completely naked and exposed, like, that's where God the Father loved him the most where he was just completely himself. And that's where we have to encounter his love, where he says, like, you know, like, let this cup or let this child pass from me if it's your will, Father. And so that's where we really experience, like, his love. And even uh, when we expose ourselves, we find healing like Jesus, right? Like, like you know, like, when we are able to ex uh, expose our, our shame, our guilt, our burden in front of the Lord, and we're able to just, like, lay it down, he's able to just console us by showing us that, like, he's there for us. And he's, like, you know, consoling us and taking care of our burden. And so even, like, for me, like, one thing I really recently realized was, you know, vulnerability is something very difficult, and it's very painful. It's, 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 often, uh, it's very difficult and challenging. But what the beauty of vulnerability is, when you're able to become vulnerable with someone else, and they're able to accept you in that, in that burden, in that sorrow, you really do discover healing when you realize that, like, I am loved despite my weaknesses, despite my failures, that I am someone who is so valued. And that's something even recently as I'm growing and sharing with different friends and having new friends, the beauty of vulnerability where, where you really just expose your heart is, is where you really discover how loved you are. And even like what Jesus talks about, what Pope Francis talks about it, even Jesus, when we expose ourselves, our nakedness, like how Jesus exposes nakedness, he consoles us that he's there. And vulnerability is something we're all afraid of. It's not, it's not easy. It's, it's definitely something difficult. But even if you look at Jesus, Jesus' dignity on the cross, he, his dignity wasn't lost because he chose to give himself away. And similarly, when we give ourselves away in vulnerability, it's a gift. And the Lord holds it. and He protects that vulnerability that you offer as a gift. Um, and, and vulnerability is not something easy. It takes time. But the important thing is to be prudent. To know when it is important to be vulnerable, to discern it, and to be genuine. And especially in, in, in vulnerability, it does become a true blessing. It's a place of healing. It's a place of consolation. And it, it's, a, it's a place where your relationship really grows. And if you even think about the gospel, Jesus didn't tell his disciples right away that he would die. It took him time. And so in the same way, when we think about friendship, vulnerability is something that takes time takes effort. It's something that is like important to be discerned about. It takes time. And so just learning to like pray about it. Like, Lord, do you really desire me to be vulnerable? Help me to be courageous and not afraid of being vulnerable because that's where we really discover true intimacy and love.
And then the, the important thing to remember is that kinship is a journey. It's not something that uh, it, it, it like you know it's something that happens overnight or something that just happens at a moment. Um, what uh, the decide what uh, Pope Francis talks about is that you know you feel Jesus at your side when you pray, and at every moment. But sometimes it's it, like it, like it's hard to become aware that he's at your side. But what he says is that you know even when the disciples are walking together, Jesus is with them, guiding them and leading them, and that he drew near to them to walk with them. And so what Pope Francis is talking about is that this is our life and our journey of friendship. That you know like especially like the disciples, there are two friends walking together, and to invite Jesus into your friendship, that Jesus is walking with you, encouraging you helping you in your friendship, leading you, guiding you, and encouraging you. And and in, in a journey, there's that many different difficulties or challenges that we'll go through. But I think the important thing to remember is that to, to not be afraid of those challenges, that those challenges just help you to go further in the journey. And to always invite Jesus into that journey. I think that's what the practice really encourages is that, especially in Christian friendship, the important thing is to always let Jesus walk with you. And to remember that even what the beauty of friendship is, is having brothers and sisters who are walking with you on your journey. They're to challenge you, they're to affirm you, they're to help you go through different obstacles. They're just to be uh, someone just to assist you on your journey. And, and, and um, one thing I would like to read from um, Pope Francis's encyclical is that he's, Pope Francis says, Friendship is no fleeting or temporary relationship, but it is one that is stable, firm, and faithful, and matures with the passage of time. It's a relationship of affection that brings us together and a generous love that makes us seek the good of our friends. Friends may be quite different from one another, but they always have things in common that draw them closer in mutual openness and trust. And so I think like, you know, as we come to the end of like, what the beauty of friendship is, friendship is something that's so, it's so important. It's a gift from God. It's truly a gift from God. And it's something that's so firm and stable that helps us in our journey. But it's not something that's quick. It takes time. It's a journey. But in the beauty of friendship is that it helps you to really grow in love, like experiencing the love of the Father. And, like, you know, what I love about this picture about uh Pope John Paul II and Mother Teresa is you can really experience the, the joy that they illuminate from their friendship. That, you know, like, what, what, what the beauty of friendship is that when, you, when two people come together as friends, they, you encounter Christ's love and you share the joy and love of Christ with one another. When Mother Teresa and, and, and John Paul II came together as friends, you could see that, that the joy and love, like especially some of the pictures where they're looking at each other, you could experience like the the joy and love that they share of Christ with one another, and 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 the beauty of this picture, and why I want to talk about the beauty of friendship, is that a friendship is a gift to the church. You know, especially when you look at Mother Teresa and John Paul too, the the love and joy that they illuminate is something that we could experience by even just looking at this picture. And so, friendship is such a gift that it helps others to encounter the the, the love of Christ and the joy of Christ by just the way in which you know, friends grow together and, and, and sharing the love of God. And that's the beauty, the true beauty of friendship. And so just a, a quick recap over um, friendship. Friendship is an important gift. And, 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 and one thing I really do encourage is, you know, just to ask the Lord to bless you in friendship because it's a gift from God. Friendship is truly a gift. And as Pope Francis talked about earlier, friendship is your gift because it, it's a way the way in which the Lord refines us because he helps us to grow in maturity by having friends that are able to challenge us, call us out, encourage us, affirm us, and challenge us. But it's also a, an important gift in a way in which we experience God's love and his intimacy. And to learn true beauty of friendship is by looking at Jesus because he is our example and he's our, our true friend, the, the, our deepest friend. Someone who is just there to encounter us, love us in our difficulties, the most vulnerable with us, the one who accepts us in our weaknesses and our challenges, but also one who is just able to like meet us in our reality and just to encourage us, strengthen us, be with us. 
and someone who is walking with us in our journey, affirming us and being with us. And the third thing is, what I encourage is prayerfully discern vulnerability because vulnerability is the greatest place of intimacy. It's where you really do discover God's uh, great love and where you experience um, a love for another deeply in the way Christ loves. And as a final thing, it's, it's a journey. Friendship is a beautiful journey. And it's a gift because it's a journey where two people could come together with Jesus on a path towards holiness. And we need friends to, to be with us and encourage us on a path towards holiness. And just um, as we go into community, um, well, I think as Julie was talking about, friendship is just so important in, uh, in Jesus because for many of us in Jesus' youth, um, the way in which we were able to experience a larger community, a larger family, was through friends who brought us into this wider community. And it's just so beautiful to have many friends or um, in Jesus' youth because they really help us to really go out of ourselves to discover how loved we are, to discover the beauty of the church, to discover uh, holiness, or people are just challenging you to become the best person you can be. And just a, a small experience of community um, is like, you know, like when uh, two years ago, um, me and my friend Joseph Steger, uh, he's in, in this one of these pictures, um, we were uh, going to the March for Life in Washington, D.C. And so we were going with the seminary. And on the way there, we were very quiet, um, you know, but uh, both of us just had this deep love of friendship and, and deep love for, uh, for the movement. And so when we got to the March for Life, we were just so excited. We were like, we want to see the Jesus leads around us. We want to see uh, our brothers and sisters. And so um, I've been in Melissa, we're full timers back then. And so we were like, we want to meet up with them. And so we decided to meet with, up, with them at the March for Life. And we were just like, you know, like singing action songs, dancing, um, you know, like singing, like marching for, at the March for Life with so much joy and just even just to be able to share with them was such a joy for us that on the way back, um, we were on the bus that we really felt like this joy like coming in our hearts. And from that joy, when we were on um, the bus ride, we were like sharing like with the, the chaperones, we were uh, we, we did act, we, both of us don't like action songs, but we were like doing action songs with the children. It was just such a joyful experience that like so many of them were like, what, what is Jesus use? What, what are you guys doing? But it was also a moment for me and Joe to really experience that, like where we were both able to see that, you know, it's through Jesus use that we are able to love the church in a deeper way, where we really experience the true family, where we're able to like illuminate that joy and that love of Christ that we encounter through our friendships. And so I'll uh, give it to Jill to continue on the webinar talking about what is community. And maybe before we continue, we can also just take a, a, a moment. You can, uh, if you feel, you can close your eyes and just bring to mind the different friendships that you may have uh, experienced in your life, the different blessings of the people. and. Um, maybe we can just spend a few moments of silence and gratitude for uh, the ways that the different people in your life have, have loved you and have encouraged you and walked with you. Lord Jesus, Lord, we thank you so much, Father, just for the different gifts and the different ways in which you've blessed us. Lord, I, I ask that, Lord, you may help us to always look to you who are a true friend. And Lord, I, I want to thank you, Father, just for the different ways in which you've blessed us with friendship. But Lord, I ask that you may help us to always look at you, you who are a true friend, Lord, always walking with us, encountering us in our realities, and loving us in spite of our weaknesses and failures. And Lord, I pray for this time as we go forward from this webinar, Lord, that you may always help us to look at you for a friend who is, and help us to just 
let you become our friend. For all these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So maybe some of you are, are seeing the beauty of these friendships, this experience, but maybe you have a question in your heart. What about if you don't have friends around you? Or what about if you don't have a community around you? And um, that's uh, the second part of this webinar that we'll kind of touch on of, of the experience of um, not having communion and, and maybe how to, to come into a, a deeper friendship and a deeper awareness. So a couple of different realities maybe we'll touch on. The first one is when you're actually physically alone or maybe when you're in a place where uh, there are no um, you know, people that you really connect with, maybe there's no Jesus youth, uh, maybe there's no people of faith, whatever, whatever you um, feel that you need to kind of be loved and to, to a place where you can rest and, and be comfortable. Um, I think this is an experience that many of us go through, especially different transitions of our life when kind of life necessitates that we move somewhere or, or you know, go to school or, or change jobs or things like that. And um, Pope Francis talks about um, this experience and, and actually how uh, really the community of faith really, um, you know, is, is uh, able to hold this person in, in a time of loneliness. I think when we look at this experience, uh, when I look at even my experience of uh, this experience of loneliness, um, after I, I grew up in New Jersey and with the Northeast uh, JY life and, um, you know, there was always so many things going on. People, I had a, a, a prayer group that I was a part of weekly, you know, and um, going from that into Boston where there were, we had a prayer uh, group for a while and there were a few people, but over time, actually, almost everyone had had, had left um, our place. And so, uh, you know, one or two years living here after marriage and uh, being a new mom, I, I really wondered, you know, God, why did you bring me here? And um, I, I don't even have people to pray with, you know, and and I, I didn't fall into despair as such, but there was uh, such a deep feeling of loneliness and, and wondering, you know, why, why God had brought me uh, here. And uh, in that time, I think um, the beauty of what God can do, especially in that um, bringing of the friendship of Christ to the priority, uh, God really showed me um, how to re- orient myself to him especially in this new phase of my life as especially as a as a mother and um and through that experience he he started to bring different people into my life that spoke to those different areas one of the things that i really longed for were um other moms that were you know trying to live faithful lives and you know at some point i wondered like am i just being like you know extra should i just be like happy with the people around me and there was uh you know it, it was clear that we are we are meant to be known and to to be loved and and those really um those needs that we have to uh have people to share our experience with is, is very real but um it has to really come from um the lord so the lord really provided me friendships through uh this this book club of, of different mothers and i didn't establish any deep friendships with them, but it was just enough in that time to kind of keep me going so even in those times when we feel very much alone, um, just to, to kind of hold on to the promise of God and to, to really lean into that friendship with Christ. Um, a, a friend was sharing that, you know, she had to move away for a job and she ended up getting an apartment by herself. And at first it was so hard coming back to that apartment. And, you know, she would just watch Netflix for hours because, you know, just to kind of fill up the silence. And she was someone that needed, you know, people around and, and she loved to, to talk and be with people and things like that. Um, but she kind of felt the Lord like prompting her to spend more time in prayer. And, and though it was very difficult to kind of enter into that loneliness, um, experiencing the beauty of the friendship Christ was really something so transformative for her and and that really kind of changed so many things so looking at this time when when you may be alone as something that the Lord has provided even when we look throughout salvation history the Lord leads people into the desert or he leads people to different places as very much a part of the plan for their life you know you could think about moses who went into midian and he was there until the the burning bush happened you know and and it was at that time that he could enter into fulfilling his call so this time when maybe that we're alone you know the lord is really doing something in us if we allow him to um, it's very easy. Pope Francis talks about the the danger of falling into um, you know social media or maybe 
this this kind of numbing ourselves with with the different realities of the world, or uh, you know, just not experiencing that loneliness. But when we lean into it and, and lean on Christ, we experience actually something so so very beautiful. So this is the first reality when you're when you're actually alone. The other reality that maybe some of us experience is when when you feel alone, you may be uh, with many people, many people that you should be able to relate with, that should understand you, but you feel very much alone. And um, I think this this is sometimes what I, I, I hear. I've heard, you know, as I've been traveling um, in in the country and things like that, and um, you know, people that that feel very much alone. And um, I think there there are a lot of different realities to this, um, but I think. Going back to the topic of vulnerability and, and kind of looking again at ourselves and um, the you know where where we have and where we've kind of come from. Um, a friend told me many years ago, you know, that with me that I didn't really share anything, and and I was like, what are you talking about? I you know I, I share everything I know to share, but in our in my conversation with her, I realized that I actually didn't know how to be vulnerable. I didn't know how to share uh, anything more because I was so used to kind of managing by myself or you know relying on myself so to rely on someone else to be dependent on someone else is is a very challenging thing um there's a jy i know that he he tells us that uh even when he doesn't need people sometimes he'll ask people for help um just so that he has a, a place to to build a relationship and kind of start a conversation and and actually it's it, uh, in a way, a, a form of, of ministry or mission where he he gives that maybe he asks for a ride or you know he asks for some help in his house or something like that. But in that small way, he's kind of building a bridge. So very much um, you know when we when we're actually feeling alone, looking around at what the Lord has provided for us and and realizing you know that we have to look through the perspective and the eyes of God rather than maybe what we've always known. And what we've always experienced so um you know those feelings may be very much real but then again bringing that to prayer and and uh remaining in that hope and so that uh that idea to to kind of uh remain with is to remain in that tension with you know god's hope and promise there's always a tendency to um either to despair to really kind of sink into that loneliness or sometimes to go above and beyond you know either you're you're like over committing to different activities or things you're filling you're overfilling your life with you know um things so you don't have to feel that loneliness but actually that that loneliness that ache is is very real and we don't have to dismiss it we don't have to say oh i don't really need friends because we actually do we do need communion we do need to be known and to be loved um, but part of that is is allowing that to come from the lord allowing that to come as part of his hope and his promise and it is something um that he truly does want for each and every one of us and i think you know when we think as a movement or when we think of uh, as a, a group of people who have experienced this uh, this love of communion, it's also our call to kind of go out to the peripheries to to look for those who are lost. Maybe someone hasn't been coming for a prayer meeting or a gathering for several months, and it's easy to just say, "Oh, they must be busy," or "They must, you know, be this or that." But the reality is when when a person is struggling, when they are going through difficult things, it's very hard for them to reach out, you know, and ask for help, even though that's the ideal situation, right? But for us to always look towards the peripheries, always look towards the outskirts and, and see who, who is alone, who is lost. And, and in that experience, actually, we receive, you know, so much, um, so much blessing and, and so much a reminder of, of what God is, is doing in our life. So. There, there's these two aspects. Sometimes we're actually alone and sometimes we feel alone. Maybe the other aspect that we want to reflect on when we think about um, uh, the absence of community is uh, when we turn away from others. So Pope Francis talks about these paths of fraternity and he uh, he brings up a quote from the bishops of Rwanda, you know, where they had such a um, powerful genocide and, and talking about this idea of forgiveness. and. When we come together as community, it's not just a let's hold hands and kumbaya and, and just be happy together, but it's actually really real and tough. And when we're talking about this idea of vulnerability or Jesus on the cross, it, it gets really messy, you know, and 
Um, the closer we get to someone, the more uh, painful it can be when they break our trust or when they hurt us or, or when something happens. And um, so it's in this uh, experience where I feel the, in a sense, the meat of the community lies and, and the true true test or true litmus test of, you know, if there's actually a community, maybe, you know, how many reconciliations, how many experiences of difficulty has this community or, or this relationship come through and withstood it with the hope of God. Um, I, I recently have uh, been reflecting on this image uh, that I, I feel God has been calling me to where, uh, you know, in the like the spy movies or things like that, there's a, if, if there's like an intruder, all the alarms and bells and everything goes down, everything goes into shutdown mode, right? Um, and then, you know, usually at the last minute, like someone will just like, like put throw something in to, to lock it up and they, they'll slide under the door. Um, so. I was, I was thinking of this image, I think, for me, when uh, I experienced a difficult situation or difficult relationship, uh, that all the alarms and bells go off in my head, and I want to put up all these walls around my heart and say, okay, no more, like, let's just, you know, I, I'm, I don't go angry, but I kind of just shut down, you know? Um, and so what I've been feeling the Lord was inviting me to so many times was to, um, you know, to stop and remind myself that I don't need to do that anymore, that I don't need to put up these walls and to protect myself because the Lord is doing that. And so when we look at the different relationships in our lives, I think um, many of us respond in different ways. Either we shut down and put barriers and walls to protect ourselves, or sometimes we, you know, go on the offensive, you know, and and, and are angry or, you know, are, are um, very resistant to, to that person. But rather than turning away or turning inwards, um, to turn towards the God in the other is maybe what we are continuing to be called to when we think about communion. Um, maybe an image to think about is like, uh, you know, even in a husband and, and wife, like maybe they may uh, be arguing about something, but uh, even when there are no words that are said, if, if a wife or a husband takes the other's hands and just holds it, you know, they might be so angry and they might be so upset with each other, but to just hold that hand is, is such a sign and is such a, um, in a sense, a consolation to, to remain in that difficult situation, to not rush past it, to not dismiss it, you know, but to, to say that, okay, we're going to do this together. And, you know, the reality is we may not be able to do that with many of the relationships in our lives, the, the, especially the, the more painful ones, but we can do that in our hearts. We can um, bring that person uh, before God in our hearts and, and remain with them, even as painful as it, as it may be. And I think I, I do think that's what God continues to invite us towards, and um, and really that is so much at the heart of of the gospel, and where we have to receive God's mercy, God's friendship from, to be able to provide that and and to live that in our in our lives. Maybe Rika, you can share a little bit about the prodigal son story and in this context. Yeah, so I think that one of the most uh, important things when we think about community and friendship is the importance of uh, and the need for forgiveness. Uh, because I think that oftentimes like what holds us back from really discovering love, intimacy, community, and real uh, depth of friendship is the, the failure or the struggle to, to reconcile. But if you really look at uh, the story, and why I really love the story of, of the prodigal son is that it's a disposition that you know, both the father and the son had. And it's just, as Zul was talking about turning, it's oftentimes what holds back or what separates us is turning away. But the, the beauty of this story is just turning toward. And so like even this, how the son just turned toward the father, you know, like he didn't even expect the father to like, you know, like forgive him. But just that turning did so much that the, the father comes, runs at him and, and forgives him. And, you know, like what I really like about that is that even in, in, in my own life, there's different times where, you know, I, I struggle with different leaders or elders or, or friendships. But the beautiful thing is that most often than that, like, you know, when I just turn towards and, and, and want to reconcile, there's something so beautiful that's happened. You know, there's so many times where I didn't want to, like, I, want, I was waiting for them or I was waiting for them to come and talk to me. But when I would just turn and just go meet them where they are, like there was just so many beautiful things that happened where 
real reconciliation, new, a deeper friendship, a deeper relationship happens. And I think what, that's so important that, you know, instead of just turning away and being in our own little bubble, the importance of turning, turning toward, turning toward the other person and seeing them in the light of Christ. And, and maybe looking at the the father in in that aspect of of turning, um, I, you know, it's, it's so beautiful to think about the father waiting with his arms wide open. You know, and I started thinking, you know, could he have done that? You know, the day that his son left, could he have just like waited there at the street with his arms wide open? And, and maybe you know, an earthly father, he he couldn't have. I was reflecting on, you know, the journey that a person even has to go to to be able to, you know, wait with their arms wide open for someone who has so deeply hurt him. You know, the son has left him, taken away everything. And, um, you know, the father must have been going through so many experiences of guilt, of shame, of pain, of anger, perhaps. But, you know, maybe in his um, in his relationship with God, allowing the Lord to, to touch those places and not just turning towards, but really in an act of blessing and an act of love, um, to stand there with his arms wide open is, is really where we are all called to, to journey towards in our, in our pilgrim journeys, you know, and, um, and just as friendship takes takes so much time. Healing also takes so much time, especially in those relationships that are so very intimate and, and so close. But then to realize that, you know, really we receive that from the Lord and um, it's not something that we can do on our own at all, but it has to be fully with the Lord. Um, if, if this is something that maybe is, is striking a chord, I, I really recommend you to read a little bit more about unilateral forgiveness or um, uh, listen to the webinar that we have on our YouTube channel about that given by Father Horn, um, which really, really talks about our, our capacity and our ability to forgive with, with, the, um, with Christ and, and through Him. Um, but this reality is very much uh, the heart of what we're all called to in our communities, in our in our teams, in our um, realities and relationships. And um, it's really, really hard. Um, actually, last night um, I, I had an experience where my my four year old daughter, she has eczema. And she woke up in the middle of the night and she was just uh, itching and 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 so um uncomfortable and and struggling and um i tried to you know console her put some cream on her but she just pushed me away so she said i don't want i don't want you mama i want papa you know and and she uh you know just kept kept doing that crying and and uh it was it was really painful you know as a mother to to have someone push me away or to have someone so close to, to deny me in that sense but um, you know, as I was um, reflecting, as in, in the middle of this, I kind of just like took a few minutes and, and the Lord asked me, you know, are you going to practice what you're about to preach, you know, about forgiveness? And I took a moment to just, you know, really bless her and to love her and to, to, to really turn towards her. And, you know, even though I'm a mother, it would have been very easy to just kind of leave her behind and say, you know, okay, then you figure it out or, or let your dad take care of it, you know, but to... Um, be in that discomfort, be in that pain and um, sadness even, and, and, you know, say, know that the Lord was in that and, and with me. And, and then to hear her little voice say, you know, I'm sorry, mama, later, you know, and, and to, to kind of have that, that moment of, in a sense, reconciliation. And the challenge is we may not be able to always experience that physical reconciliation, but allowing that journey to start in our heart and allowing us to have the capacity to to bless actually those who have hurt us is truly the uh, Christian ideal and, and what we're called to. And, and I, I, at least in my experience, and I'm sure that, um, you know, many people have experienced that when, when that happens in our hearts, when we are able to embrace that person in our heart, um, it really allows grace is to move through, through them as well and, and allowing for a, a deep healing and, and reconciliation. Um, you know, we, we really want to reflect on this as one of the core ideas and elements of, of Christian community that we can't uh, just dismiss or, you know, push past in, in order to work for the Lord. Like this is the, the gospel, you know. Um, so maybe to just to, to bring the ideas together, uh, the two main points of, of this uh, section is 
to when you're alone to remain in the tension with God's hope and promise. And then the second is always turn to the God in the other, whether in times of joy, sorrow, or hurt. And and it's in turning towards the other that we really experience um, uh, God's love and mercy for ourselves and, and for our lives. So we, we thought we'll um, kind of wind up with a small um, reflection. So um, uh, just a small meditation, especially in this time of, of Advent and as we're preparing for Christmas, maybe we can reflect on the person of Mother Mary. And um, I invite you to bring three different scenes to your mind. Um, the first scene being the visitation. And the visitation, Mother Mary visits Elizabeth um, and when she felt probably so alone in this time of, of deep confusion, of, of chaos in her life really, uh, the first thing that she feels called to do is, is go with haste to be with her cousin sister and in her time of need and to, um, in that experience of of turning towards uh, another, turning towards her sister, she's actually so deeply affirmed in um, the promise that God has for her and, and the promise that she's carrying within her. So in the times when, you know, when we're feeling alone, um, to invite our, our, uh, ourselves to, to turn towards those around us and to, to lean in on those that um, even, even if we may feel our need to, to recognize that God actually uh, does so many beautiful things in that relationship. So we can reflect on uh, that that image for for a moment. The second image that I'd invite you to reflect on is the scene at the nativity, then with Mother Mary um, at the most uh, maybe intimate experience and vulnerable experience of her life, giving birth. Uh, she doesn't have her family around, she doesn't have her mother around, but she has a stable and animals and shepherds and, and later three wise men. Um, and in this most unlikely of places, she finds people who are, are with her, who are uh, guiding her and, um, uh, you know, really uh, just supporting her in her time of need. So it, it, it's so beautiful to think of those times when we may be feeling alone, but to look through uh, with the eyes of Christ and to recognize that he always provides for us, that he always uh, supports us in our need. So maybe the last reflection I invite you to um, enter into is at the foot of the cross with Mother Mary. Mm -hmm. And in this, I, I really invite you to imagine what this scene must look like and what Mother Mary's heart must be experiencing um, in, in all these years and in all the sorrows of her life, um, having to escape to Egypt, all that came with the birth of, of Jesus. and losing Jesus in the temple, so many different experiences and so many different sorrows and so many different words from people over the years that that took away, um, you know, the, the beauty of this promise within her and and standing at the foot of the cross and, and, and maybe hearing that voice questioning, you know, wondering, is this really worth it or was it, uh, you know, was it was it all for for a loss kind of thing, but um, to remain in in that place of sorrow with Jesus on the cross and in that reminder that she had in her heart that Christ was within her and that same hope um, that she had when she visited Elizabeth when um, she was it was a uh, promise that this this promise within her would be fulfilled that same um, hope still remains even on the cross and actually that hope becomes mercy poured out for for all of us and so as we stand with mother mary on the cross i invite you to um, bring to mind any relationship um, in your life especially one that may be broken or struggling anyone that came to your mind as as uh, i was talking earlier or uh, when we reflected on friendships and i just invite you to um, bring that person with you on the cross. Maybe it's actually really painful to be even near that person or to 
think about that person, but um, in your prayer and in your desires, um, allowing the blood and water which gushed forth from Jesus to wash over you and wash over that person. And um, maybe if you, you feel called, to reach out a hand to that person and to hold them. Um, and sometimes even in this experience, it may not be a, a physical person. Maybe it's um, our relationship with God that we need to, um, to repair or our relationship with uh, a group of people or our family members, but um, to remain in that place of, of hope and of God's mercy um, and to recognize that God is always there uh, in that experience. So we can just have a few moments of silence allowing um, these things to, to sink a little bit deeper into our hearts. to wind up, we can um, bring all of these relationships to mind, all of the beautiful and joyful relationships and all the um, difficult, struggling relationships, and we can um, bring them to Mother Mary, and um, we can uh, pray the Memorare. Remember, O oh Most Gracious Virgin Mary, that anyone to that protection and help or sought thy intercession, inspired by the before you stand, this is not a petition, but in thy mercy, hear and answer us. Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen.